where we once were corroded, now it is protected. Nice and yellow. There we go. That was very corroded. It took multiple, multiple sprays with the corrosion remover to get all that out of there. Good to go. So, a little too overboard on that one. Oopsie. Happening the hood. Illumination powering on. Hello, everybody. Good day to you, and welcome back. This is video two of our 2010 Ford Escape 2.5 liter four cylinder front wheel drive. Troy's back on the right rear window regulator yet again. Uh, in the first video, link to it down in this video's description if you happen to miss it. But in the first video, we diagnosed a EVAP system purge valve issue as uh, having a faulty purge valve. We found some excessively worn out and original spark plugs with a small valve cover gasket leak. That stuff was all taken care of and buttoned up. And now we're moving on to the AC section uh, again while Troy continues to fix those broken window regulators. So what we found with this AC is that the compressor was making a bunch of noise. Uh, we've got a little bit of uh, excessive pressure on the high side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the expansion valve and just give that a peek inside. Um, we've ordered another one. Um, it comes with the compressor. The compressor is here, but the valve is not yet here, but that isn't gonna stop us from pulling it apart. So right about now, I'm gonna get that thing, uh, that TXV removed. By the time I get that thing all done and we get some of this other stuff disassembled. So in this episode, we're gonna focus on the AC system. Let's get that expansion valve removed. There's gonna be a 13 millimeter nut that holds the manifold hoses onto it. And then there should be two uh, hex bolts that go through that bolt it to the flange on the evaporator on the other side. And I believe I can just pull that thing out right here from the front uh, from this side of the firewall. Let's see, so what we need to do is get back there with this 13 mil and get these hoses disconnected. The system has already been discharged, so we're not gonna spray refrigerant everywhere. Let's unclip that nut, back that guy off, and don't drop it around the hose we go. Disconnect that, Let's see what we've got in store down in here. Oh, those are not, uh, hex bolts, those are Torx fasteners. Okay, we've gotta go into the side here and get this bracket disconnected on the line. Wrong socket. Yeah, let's try this again. Unlinkage. There we go, gotcha. Okay, now with that bracket disconnected, our hose is gonna come off. I, I see some black stuff in there. It's compressor death. Okay, Torx 27. Coming in, that's uh, commonly referred to as a star bit. See the little star pattern on it? Let's go ahead and pull these two bolts out. I can't lose these because the, uh, the new TXV may or may not come with replacement fasteners. I don't know yet. So let's pull these guys out, set them aside, and then we just have to wiggle this valve out become disconnected valve. What are you doing? You're right now. Let's put the nut back on it. We'll pull it out with pliers. Coming in, just get a hold of it. I'm pulling and slight wiggle action. There she goes. Unit pops right out. There's no visual indicators of a failure here except for, looks like some kind of corrosion down there and a little bit of debris. Okay, let's see if I can't get those O-rings off of the evaporator. There's one of them. And O-ring number two. I don't wanna drop these because I'll have to resize the replacements. There's number two. Okay. Okay, so in order to get that compressor out, we're probably working from the bottom up. So let's get this thing up in the air some. We'll pull that wheel off if necessary, and we'll start to dig that unit out of the truck. Uh-oh! The rains have come. It must be late afternoon on a summer Florida day. Yeah, well, it's getting nasty out there. All right, retreat. Retreat. Now, as we move on up, I can spy some brand new brakes. 
See the cross hatch on the motors? Those are uh, freshly installed brake components. Hey, let's swing around here to the inside and take a look. Oh yeah, yep. New rotors, new set of pads, new calipers, new hoses. Let's just put that guy back on where it goes. How's this other side doing? Oh, same thing. Let's just put that right back. Brand new stuff though. Very nice. Okay, so we have a work in progress car. People have been uh, tinkering this thing back together. Let's see here. All right, so there's our belt tensioner. I'm, I'm gonna have to get to that and take this belt off. And then, looks like I can unbolt this compressor and drop it out from, uh, from right here. That's good, okay. Now I can probably change this compressor with the wheel on, but that'll be harder. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the thing right off. We'll lose the wheel and that little plastic shield that's back there, because that's kind of in the way as well. go moving in a little further -er. we can see that little plastic piece held in with a couple 10 mils and I think I saw a zip tie down there let's get that stuff removed there's a 10 there's a 10 and there's another clip right up around the corner there this one here is just a plastic push clip we'll get behind it with a trim tool come here full of dirt it's not unclipping I'll break you I'll replace you and break you come out hmm really no mercy I'm out yep gonna break it it will die it's no longer going to be here come on there there, removed, nice and easy, hooray. Okay, back down below, let's get uh, the remaining fasteners here. I found a couple extras. There's a 10 right there for this panel and probably another one over here somewhere. Get that one unclicked. And the last one, where are you? Nowhere. Ah, there it is, it's hiding. That's gonna, that's all rusted. That thing's gonna break off, look at that. And there's some spider nests in there. Okay, here goes nothing. We got a wobble on a 10. There we go, click that thing on. So this is either gonna snap off or it's gonna come out. And it chose to come out with the spider webs. Gross. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a whole lot easier now. We have some space. I can reach everything. The belt looks horrible. Yeah, we're gonna replace that too. Okay, 15 mil flex head ratcheting slide and drive wrench coming in. Say that five times fast. Let's get this belt released. Come here. Get rid of this guy. Come here, belt because you're being replaced. So we can pull this out right now. Toss that thing aside. Give it back to me, alternator. The nader had it. All right, belt's gone. Now we've got, looks like four 13 millimeter bolts that uh, secure the compressor to the engine block and uh, the hoses and the connector. This thing should come free. Again, the system's already discharged. Uh, here is, I've got the connector in hand, but it won't unclip. It's full of sand, I can feel it's grainy. Okay, connector's off, got that. Uh, I need to go in there. I'm going with my 13. Break these things loose, then we can spin them out with the electron ratchet. Let's see here. here, you guys move over here some, we'll get some more light on the subject. There we go. We're gonna have to look past all the hoses. It's unfortunate. Unclick that one. Yeah, I'm not gonna take these hoses off just so we can see. That's uh, not gonna work for me. But I can move them out of the way, then you can see. Hmm, wrong way. There's one. Number two coming out. Good. Pull this guy out. Got him. 
Now going up for that top bolt, it looks like there's only one. Let's see if I can get this to come loose. Yep. Oh yeah, there is just one because it's starting to move now. And my flashlight almost hit me in the face. Okay. Come here, top bolt. <clears throat> Stuff's falling everywhere. All right, that's bolt number three. Let's start to lower this thing down and we can disconnect it from the hoses. Come on out. It's dropping corrosion everywhere. No. So we're looking, we rotate it around to the back side of the compressor. I need to get, there we go. Whoa. Uh, insulation's full of water, that's nasty. Oh, running down my arm. Let's get rid of these two nuts. I'm getting Niagara. Gross. Get that out of here. One hose. Oh, it's getting heavy now too. And come off. You guys see? Here. Now you can. Come on, you. There's so much corrosion in it. There. Woo, buddy. Okay. Compressor's out. That was nasty. Oh, looky here. We found something interesting. There's a bunch of refrigerant dye running out of this insulation. You see that? Look at that. Oil and dye. That's what killed the compressor. That means that this hose has a leak somewhere inside that insulation because there's dye here. Okay. Well, that makes this repair a different color. Like literally, it makes it green. And this green is not good this time. So yeah, we've got a leak somewhere. This insulation has been filling up because it's like U-shaped. This thing's been filling up with refrigerant dye for who knows how long. The system's probably been continuously discharging over and over and over again but I definitely found a leak. I know it's been recharged because we didn't find a low refrigerant level. So we found a leak, that thing's gotta be replaced. Didn't expect that to happen, but you never know. Never know what you're gonna find. Anyway, I need to get that thing ordered. In the meantime, let's get this compressing unit unboxed. This unit here is our replacement. Came with instructions. I think it's a remanufactured, not a new unit. Uh, it is an aftermarket compressor. The Ford compressor, uh, I think the price was like $1,200 or something like that for the Motocraft. So we, we elected to get an aftermarket unit. Too much dollars for the, uh, the Ford unit. Come on, packaging. Here, I know. Let me figure out how to take things out of boxes. Very well packaged. Holy smokes. Oh, we've got a warning label. Our first bit of instructions that matter. Let's see here. What does this say? This compressor is pre-charged with three ounces of oil. Must add recommended amount and type. Scan the QR code for specification. Okay, save that for later. That looks good. Three bolts, two two plugs for the two hoses, one connector, one clutch. Definitely a reman, the whole thing's been spray painted black. Okay. So let's get this thing bolted up to the block. And look, it says Fomoco. So it is a Ford compressor, rebuilt by someone else. How about that? All righty, now comparing these two units side by side, they are similar in dimensions. Connector, connector, we've got our two ports, three bolts, equal number of ribs on the clutches. So what we're gonna do here is I need to transfer over these studs from the old unit onto the new unit. Those are what bolt the, uh, the hoses to the compressor. So let's pull these guys out. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the plugs in for the time being. I don't want any oil to spill out while I'm trying to maneuver this thing. So what we're going to do is impact these guys out e torque come on stud come out put that one back in there we go next 
put that one back in. Run it down until it stops. And I'm going to put the nuts on it so the uh, these caps don't blow off. I don't know if this is under a vacuum or if it's under pressure. It could be under a vacuum, but either way, I'm putting those guys back on. So we can set this compressor aside for now and get this one maneuvered into position. All right, back up in our compressor hole here. Let me kind of mock this up. We're gonna test fit it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that I can squeeze these valves on and off, or valves, these hoses on and off with that compressor in position there. So I need to wait until we get the replacement before I can proceed. All right, let's bring this Jeep down again. Uh, I don't have a hose that still has not arrived. Uh, it's on the way, but I do have an expansion valve. So we're gonna go back to the top, to the firewall and get that TXV installed. Okay, first things first, I need to get these replacement O-rings back on the evaporator. That's kind of hard to do, but we gotta do it. Right, there's one O-ring, got that one on, and O-ring at numero dos, right there over the discharge tube. There we go. Push that on all the way, both of them good to go. New O-rings installed. Let's grab the valve and get that thing fitted next. New valve coming in, came with a new stud, and we will reuse two bolts that uh, install this onto the flange on the evaporator. Let's get this guy in position. So all we need to do is just get this past the installation and I'll wiggle it around till I feel, feel it slide in and we can see the pipe right through the hole there. That's the pipe on the evaporator side. So that's in position. Let's get the uh, two studs in or two bolts, two fasteners. A one and a two. There we go. Couple clicks with the Torx 27. There we go. Clickage. All right. All right, now I can get the lines bolted back on. Let's put a new seal on both of these line connections. Slide that one in. There's that line. New seal going on. Come on, seal, get on there. Ooh, that's the, that's a tight squeeze. I don't think that's the right one. Yeah, let's try this one next, see if that one slides. Yep, sure does, that one goes in, good to go. Okay, let's get this guy in position. Slide that over the hose. It uses one clamp for uh, for both hoses there. Clever design. Now we'll get the nut set up. Put that guy on. And of course the nut for the bracket on that other hose. Get that guy set up. Good. Let's get this guy tight. Clickages. And the same thing with that 10 mil down there for that bracket. Let's get that guy on and uh, should be good to go here. Clickage. All right, good on the top side. Still waiting on that hose to show up. All righty, so we need to dig this hose out of here uh, in order to, uh, well, for when the new one shows up. So the one in question is this hose right down here. Uh, not this one right here in front of us, that suction hose is good, but this one goes from the condenser, which is out front, down to the compressor, and that's the one that has to be replaced. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it down there. Let's get some, uh, some light on the subject. Looking way down in that hole, you can see the two lines bolting up to the condenser. See right, right down there. I need to get to that, and I think what I have to do is just pull this grill off and then I can go in there with a wrench and take that nut loose. So let's try that first. Looks like we've got a 10 mil 
times two and maybe some clips. So let's see if we can't pull this thing off to get to that fastener that uh, connects that line to the condenser. 10 millimeter back in action. Here's one. Numero dos. There we go. Let's just see here. It's loose. Yeah, there are some clips at the bottom that are kind of broken. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, look, there was two more. See that there? That's been broken for a while. There's another one over here that's been broken. But to back it up, there's a clip uh, times two and another one. So that's enough to keep the thing secure. Looks like it's been removed before. Anyway, that should be sufficient to uh, get down there and get that 13 mil nut off so I can uh, remove that line. And I believe it's gonna be the top one that I've got my finger on. Yeah, that's great. Right. Let's see if we can get in there with the ratcheting wrench. Aha, yes we can. It fits in tight spaces. Get that guy loosey goosey. And then I can reach it with the flanges. Not really. I can't, I can't reach. No, no. I tried so hard. Well, I can reach, but not without blocking the, the view of you guys. Sorry. Got to do what I got to do when I got to do it, which is right now. There it comes. Let's not drop this. Got it. Okay. Now we just need to pop this, uh, this flange off. And walk it out. Come on. Become released. There it goes. Good. A little bit more. Got it? Very good. Okay. Now I'll grab this from the back and pull the hose through the hole here. And it's mostly free. Uh, I gotta send it out through the bottom. Come out. Get out of there, you. There it is. That one. There she is. Still leaking everywhere, too. Look at that. Nasty. Okie dokes. Parts guys pulled up. I've got a new replacement hose here. It comes with no leaks. There's no holes in it. It was probably leaking. I think the old one was leaking right around here somewhere. Is what it kind of looked like. I can see like some faint green coloring up here on all this crusty business. So I think it was leaking in there. And then it was leaking down. All the oil was pooling up where this thing turned. And then earlier when we uh, pulled this thing down, it all ran out of the bottom and spilled all over my arm. This is gross. So let's feed this thing back down and then we'll run. I think we have to go under, oh no, I dropped it. I dropped it and it kind of went where I wanted it to. How about that? What are the odds? That's gonna go up and through that hole right there, get in there. Hmm, I got it all wrong here. We're going like this, yep, through the hole, through the other side, and then I can connect it to the condenser. So, what I need to do here is get that cap off. I left it on to protect everything. It came with a new seal and a new O-ring, so I do not have to replace either of those. Straighten that back up. We'll slide it over the stud into the condenser, like so, and then I can get the nut back in position. There we go. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Nice and easy installation. Get in there with the wrench, tighten down this 13 nut, then we'll get this thing back up in the air, get that compressor bolted in and reconnected, and uh, recharge this entire system, see how it's gonna run. I've got high hopes here. It's not gonna leak, click, and our pressures are gonna be perfect. All right, Escape, moving back up. Almost all the way up. Moving on up. Yeah, that's that's good right about there. On the locks for safety, leakage. All right, so our new hose 
has a new o-ring and it also has a new seal new gasket on it see that right there the old one i've got to peel these guys off and replace them with new units so here let's pop this o-ring out get rid of that and there's our new one slide that guy back on actually let's get the gasket on there first there we go almost reversed order of operations so we've got uh, new gaskets new seals on both hoses let's get that compressor bolted up all right compressor let's get uh, our little caps removed here we'll pop the seal yep there's oil in there that's for sure let's get this other side off come on become removed Ooh, they're stubborn. It's a stubborn gasket. Okay. No problem. I'll just force it. Wiggle it and force it. It'll come out of there. There we go. Cap's gone. Now, how was this arranged? Let me see. This one. That one goes there. And this one goes. It's gonna go like that. So, I've got this one. My order of operations are wrong. I'm doing it bass backwards again. Let's get this one on, the new one on first. There we go. Hmm, that fitment's not the best. Look, it's uh, interfering. I'm gonna have to flex it. There. Slight modifications necessary to ensure proper fitment. Okay, those guys are on. Let's get our bolts in position. Nuts. These aren't bolts, they're nuts. Nuts and studs. There we go. A couple clicks with the 13. That one's on. That one's on. Now, we can flip this guy over and get it up into its home on the engine block. You gonna fit? Don't tell me we have a fitment problem with the hoses on. I'll be slightly annoyed. Oh, get in there. Let's try it from over here. We don't have a fitment problem, I was just going at it from the wrong angle. That's all. Okay, that's in. It's in position. At least. And three bolts coming in. Got to squeeze them past all my hoses and whatnot here. Let's get these guys started so the thing can't fall out. That's one. Second one's behind the hoses. You guys can't see, but I know it's there. You know it's there, we saw it come out. And the third one, gravity, I dropped it. Third one, that one goes all the way up at the top. I can feel the hole. There it is, it's in, threaded, and we need some torque. Electron kick for the win. There's one, that's tight. Top one next. Ah, that one's almost tight. And numero tres. Come on, you. There we go. Clickage. All right. Three of them in. Ooh. Oh, thank you very much. No, nope, I'll get it. Okay, that's three fasteners installed. Let's go around to the front side of the engine and get the serpentine belt installed. All right, belt coming in. Letters facing outwards because I'm weird like that. And I think it looks pretty good. 
So we're gonna hang that over top the nader. That's a grooved pulley. We've got an idler here, that's smooth face. So that one's gonna go around that. Back up top to another grooved pulley. Around the water pump, which is smooth. I think I've got this right, which, and I don't. No, that's way off. Doing something wrong here. But I think I'm close. -ish. Ah, I see where I failed. Here we go. This one does not go around the water pump. It goes straight down to the compressor. And then the water pump gets driven like this. I think it's like that. And my belt fell off. They're new. Almost. So much closer. It's either like that or it goes. Oh, I know how this is gonna go. It goes like that. That'll take up the rest of that slack. There we go. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Almost. And then it goes around the crank. Okay. So grab the wrench here to loosen the tensioning device. It's a spring-loaded automatic tensioner, so we don't set the belt tension. It does the work so I don't have to. So I'll reach around here, grab a hold of that tensioner, take that thing loose as far as I can, and gotta pull this thing into position here. Hang on, I might have to re-strategize this. Yep. I'm going to pull off this smooth face idler here. Give it some extra slack. We'll get it on the crank. There we go. Now I can pull it over that idler, I think. Yeah, that's correct. Seriously? belt's too short. Come on, look at that. Yeah, the belt's too short. That's uh, not okay. Or I'm not getting enough throw out of the tensioner. Hang on. All right, that's all I got. Oh man, manhandling a serpentine belt today. Come on. It's maximum throw. Oh, it's so close. Oh, nope. That belt's a little too short, I think. What is that? It's silly. I'll get it. I know it fits. The part number says it fits. It's gonna fit. Okay, I've, I've got an idea on how to get this to go on. Since it's being stubborn and causing me some heartache, I'm gonna use some crankshaft rotation to guide the belt on. See, I can get it almost all the way over the uh, this water pump pulley up here, the smooth face pulley. I can get it around it almost all the way, but then it uh, I fall just like a millimeter short. You know that? So what I want to do is I'm gonna hold it in position, hit you guys with a ratchet. And I'm going to turn the crank, and the crank is going to pull that belt around, and it's going to give me that last little nanometer of space. See that? See it walking it on? Now the groove slipped off the crank, so let's go back a little bit. Try again. Just let it slip back in position. There we go. And or one groove off over here on that tensioner pulley. So if I just give this a push, you guys see? Yeah, if I give it a push, walk it back around, slides it right on there. There we go. Now we're cooking. Let's give it a couple turns to make sure everything stays uh, in position. Hmm. A little more, one more groove.
There we go. Got it. Now we're good. Woo hoo. All right, so now I just gotta pull my tensioner back out, or pull my uh, my wrench off the tensioner. The tensioner has control of the belt. It's in all the grooves. It's on all the smooth pulleys. And uh, that is one successful belt installation. We're good to go. Let's get out of here. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Let this thing down and uh, get the system recharged. All right, Escape. Coming down. All the way down. There, there we go. Let's go ahead and fetch the AC machine and uh, get this system recharged. We don't need that. Okay, AC machine, you're coming with us. Unit powering on. It's still plugged in. We'll roll this guy right on over, get it hooked up to our escape, and uh, evacuate, vacuum, and recharge. Actually, we don't need to evacuate. It's already evacuated. There's nothing in the system. It's been empty all night, waiting for parts. I've already changed the uh, service port valves when you guys weren't looking. You guys have seen enough of that. I figured I could leave that part out without too much consequence, right? And someone's gonna be like, Ree! I wanted to see that. No. Sorry, you missed this one. Don't worry, there will be more. Okay, turn that guy on. Let's put this unit into a vacuum. We'll do 10 minutes. That's a pretty standard protocol. While that's happening, I can go ahead and get this grill bolted back on. I left it over here. Mirror grill. Let's get this thing in position. Move the AC lines out of the way. Let's get our clips in first because that's all that really secures the bottom of this unit. Since the little side tabs were broken. There we go. It's aligned. Let's get the bolts back in. There we go. Come on, bolt. Another. Good. Get that secured. That one's secured. And now we wait for the machine. Come on, vacuum. Do your thing. Oh, you know what? We never plugged in the connector. I'm just going to reach in there and do that right about now. It would be a shame for the, the AC to not turn on because it's not connected, right? Epic failure connector click. Good to go. All right, machine has finished placing the system into a vacuum. Let us initiate the charge. We are looking for 1.56 pounds of refrigerant. Uh, negative on a PoE system. 1.56 pounds. Don't let me forget. 1.56 pounds. Charging, 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 charging. Come on with it. Zero, one. 0.56 pounds of refrigerant. Well, that's charging, high side charge. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of dye into it. I didn't see a huge amount. Put that in. That was that, not this. Let's give this about a, maybe a quarter ounce. Oh, goodness, gravity, camera gravity. Quarter ounce of, uh, of dye slash oil. Just a little bit. There we go. Disconnected. Is there a die? Charge is going in. 1.451 pounds. Good to go. We're nearly there. Nearly. We'll plug this back in so we can get a good pressure reading. Reconnector U. That one's a stubborn one. All right, machine is done. Do a hose compensate. There we go. Troy's torquing some wheels for us. Good job, buddy. Uh, let us restock into the engine and see what kind of performance this system is going to uh, to yield us. Beginning engine starting sequence now. AC on. Full speed ahead. Recirc. Let's go see what we're doing here. Show me the pressures. Good. Let's let it stabilize some. The fans are on. 
the compressor's running. It's not making a bunch of clankety clank noise. Where are we at? 225, 230, 240. 38 pounds on our low side. And let's see what our current temp and humidity is today. About 91.5 degrees and 59% relative humidity. That's, that's pretty good. We're, uh, we're right in line with where we should be here. I don't think we've got a restriction. However, the final test on that condenser will be how does our overall center vent temp come out to. Right now we're at 50 and some change. Let's see where it lands. Okay, let's get our hoses off of here. I'm gonna go ahead and prep this thing to back it out. I still need to take it on a, on a test drive. We have yet to drive the vehicle. Disconnected. There we go. Throw our caps back on. Clicked. And cap clicked numero dos. Very good. Alrighty, back into the cabin. Uh-oh, I locked myself out. This is why we roll the windows down. Uh, begin unlocking now. There we go. There. Anyway, as I was saying before I interrupted myself with myself, back to the cabin. Let's revisit our thermal meter and look at that. 42 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. That is making cold air. Success. It's fantastic. All right, guys. So real quick recap on everything we've done here. We've replaced and repaired both rear window regulators. Those should be operating as designed. The windows stay up. We no longer need blocks of wood to support the glass. Let's do one last verification that those guys are functioning as designed. Looking good, both going up, both going down. Excellent. We did a minor tune up on it, changed the valve cover gasket. Windows back up. We got an AC compressor in it. We found a leak in one of the hoses tossed in a thermal expansion valve because it came with the compressor so we have almost a complete system uh, restoration here pressures were good temperatures are fantastic you know we're still sitting in those uh those low 40s that's what we want to see we fixed the uh, emission system got rid of the check engine light let's go ahead and take this thing out on the road real quick we'll give it one spin around the block and uh and that's going to call it good for this particular operation so uh, before we head out, I'll just go ahead and take this opportunity right now to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this video. As always, I greatly appreciate you being here until the end. Since you are here until the end, I'm going to assume that you did in fact like this video. If you did like this video, you know the drill. Please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And of course, most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. Quick intermission, open the gate. Let's get out on the road. We're gonna make a right, cross the bridge, make a left, go under the bridge, and then we shall return. Let's make sure this thing's feeling good, not misfiring with no check engine lights and all that good stuff. I did not uh, record it, but we also did a transmission fluid service on this truck. I figured you guys had seen enough of those uh, over the past couple months, so I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna beat that horse to death. Because next time I actually make a video about it, you guys will be like, oh, I saw these a thousand times. I don't want to watch another one. But the fluid was nasty. So nasty. Okay, red light, right turn. We're good to go here. Shifting good. I like it. Power band feels good. I like it. AC feels great. I really like that. I'm pleased with it. I hope that this vehicle provides them many, many more years of reliable service. And it will new brakes and new tires and new AC and new window regulators and new spark plugs and new emissions equipment. I think this thing's good to go. Ring, ring. Yeah, this is a kind of a weird type of intersection because we make a right, go over the bridge, but then we got to make a left and then another left. So we kind of do like this uh, X pattern to go around the shop. Hello shop, parking lot is full. I don't realize it until I see the aerial view. That place is jam packed right now. A lot of traffic today. Dang. Oh, it's my lucky day. Check it out. Green left turn arrow. Oh, very nice. Safety check. Yellow left turn arrow just in time. Woohoo! It is my lucky day. All right, guys. We're around the corner of the shop. I'm headed back. 
moving on to something else. See you guys later. End of transmission.